welcome to 50 Voices for Malcolm X. We're going to get the show on the road. My name is Roger Griffith. I'm the co-producer of the 50 Voices for Malcolm X, Movements for Change, I'm the chair of Jima Radio and a social, social entrepreneur. Community conversations in bars, in clubs, in uh, festivals, uh, you know, wherever I am, uh, people say, yeah, it's good what you're doing, but yeah, we, we, you know, it's just, we don't want to just put something on in a, in a little village hall, an Eastern Community Centre or, or a Malcolm X Centre, right? We, we can do that and more. Sharon, Tom and James say, mi casa, su casa. On behalf of all of us at Jima Radio, it's a pleasure to host 50 Voices for Malcolm X. So this year it's all about partnership, to use not just radio, but the arts, literature and heritage as a cultural platform to provoke debate, provide inspiration and insight. The very heart and soul of social ideas and activism. Where did it put you when they said, the bus company said, we will allow a limited amount. But when we asked for the amount, it was neither one nor two. However, they did said we will allow people to, to be interviewed. I see a tall, respectable, brown-skinned man with dark green glasses on his face. I see a debate, cool. And I see a man like a lawyer, first with words, and the subject is right. You never know how a poem is gonna go before you perform it. I could feel the man, I could feel um, and hear what he was saying to me from the 60s, and um, I wanted to get that across. How come you can see more than this? What made you say, yes, we can? What made you believe that you are the original man, the original Asiatic man? Do the ancient kingdoms of Nubia whisper who you are? Did the dark libraries of Timbuktu tell you you were the first star? Did they say, I'm going to change this? This just isn't right. This is just bizarre. It's great in a theatre because uh, the rooms are, are built to, to amplify sound and your voice. I don't know if I'm right here under false pretenses. I'm just speaking. <laughs> um, so, uh, talking to Roger, he just, uh, he just asked for a few words of reflection on um, Malcolm X. So, a few words of reflection. Um, I, I, as a young person growing up in Bristol, was a young person growing up looking for heroes, like many young black kids growing up in the city. You know, actually, I remember back in the day, Cherry Eugene coming on ITV, we were all yeah. tuning in, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, there's our, there's our forerunner. Yeah. Um, with the support of the Arts Council and with the support of our community, because they're the ones who, who, who brought this there. We, we've, they've said, oh, we don't want things in, in Black History Month all the time. We just think, you know, why can't we have it all through the year? Why can't we use other venues? So I said, okay, why don't we try, try talking to these other people? Why don't we put an event that is open, not just to the, the black community, not just to, to any community, but to everybody. This is a poem I would like to recite to you and to share with you all. It's based on my own personal experience. It's called Respect. When you have learning difficulties, you get called bad names. People just don't see me the way I really am. Yes, I love him like this. Towering over this world like the Himalayas, steadfast and shouldering strength into my life. He is people of mountains. It's great to hear a counter narrative to all the stuff that you get in the mainstream and to know that there are people out there you can connect with creatively um, and who share the same issues and concerns that you have. So it was amazing, I was blown away and the voices were powerful.